I think the there was a break to visit because what happened was that the optics of the region have changed. The I understand that the ceasefire is mostly holding, but we also know some of the cases of violation of ceasefire by the Armenian side. For instance, in the Gilamboy region, there have been uh, some shelling for the mine throws. But overall, overall, the ceasefire is holding. Now, it's important to understand that we have Azerbaijani side has declared ceasefire unilateral several times. And uh, we, well, we ask the Armenian side to join the ceasefire. However, at the moment, at the moment, uh, previously they, they would refuse to do that, but now, now we do have a ceasefire going, so it's fine. It's exactly the time when this all just happened before. So. What specifically was it? As a result, at this moment, we have a statistic that six civilians have been killed, uh, about 24 civilians have been injured severely, uh, including, by the way, uh, there was a 13 years old boy and an underage girl who were killed. And we have 20, uh, 230 plus civilian residences which have been shelled and destroyed. And of course, uh, at this moment, the official statistics from the Ministry of Defense is that Azerbaijan unfortunately lost about 31 uh, uniformed personnel. Understanding of strategic importance of Azerbaijan for the, uh, for the region. I mean, the, just think about this. Azerbaijan is the president of Russia, France, and the United States, which are the co chair countries of the Minsk Group, they have repeatedly said status quo is unacceptable. What the last escalation showed, it's not only unacceptable, it's unsustainable. It's impossible to keep it that way. So we, what we mean by change is the beginning of a comprehensive negotiation on a peace agreement, which would be very good. So for instance, Armenian troops begin gradual withdrawal from the occupied territories. Refugees and IDPs return to their dwellings. We resume normal relations with Armenia. Community, Azerbaijani and Armenian communities of Nagorno-Karabakh begin their contacts. They live next to each other. And Armenia begins to integrate into the region. It's open, open, diverse, tolerant, and very inclusive of all. Religions. I think the United States should insist, along with Russia and France, uh, on a on the beginning of the comprehensive agreement, which basically means that uh, a immediate and gradual withdrawal of Armenian occupation troops from uh, the territories which are now under their control, and as a result the normalization of the situation. It's basically, the plan is on the table. Everybody knows the plan. It's been endorsed uh, by France, Russia, and the United States. It's been endorsed by the Minsk Group. It's, it's a generally accepted principle. The, uh, what, what we're asking is not something that we want to impose on somebody. It's already been on the table for quite some time. It's not nothing new there. Um, all that's needed is a decision by the Armenian leadership that it's time to think about their future and about their people rather than their personal benefit international role today in energy security, in security overall, in promoting tolerance and openness. So I think at this moment the ceasefire holds, largely holds. Uh, I'm hoping that, hopeful that uh, th there will be no further hostilities. We have unilaterally st stopped our activity. In fact, for us the restoration of the ceasefire was the most important thing from the very beginning. But it's up to Armenian side, they're on our territories. Azerbaijani president said, President Aliyev said, look, we will not fire, we stand on our positions, but Armenia should stay on theirs. If they begin another attack, there will be retaliation. This is a big stark difference, and that's what makes it so sad.